Hi everyone, I'm Miss Lydia from the Boston Library. Thank you for joining me for our Craft Friday project. Today we are making Christmas ornaments. So I have three different techniques that I'd like to show you today. The first one is great to do with small children. So this is going to involve making a simple salt dough and making handprint ornaments. Our first step is to make our clay. So I have two cups of flour here, a half a cup of salt, and three quarters of a cup of warm water. So my first step is to mix my two cups of flour and my half a cup of salt. And I'm just going to stir that together. Once that is all mixed in, I'm going to slowly add my water in. You can easily double this if you want to make more dough. I just thought I'd make a small amount for demonstration purposes here. So you can stir this to a certain point and then you're just going to want to use your hands to mix it and incorporate it. It starts out very sticky, but once you continue to incorporate more flour and salt into it, you'll end up with a soft and pliable dough like this. If it ends up being too sticky, you can add a little bit more flour. If it's too dry, you can add a little bit more water. Just go with very small amounts because it can change the consistency very quickly. Once I have my dough at a pretty good consistency, I'm going to place it on a piece of parchment and I'm going to use a rolling pin or my hands to roll it out to about a half inch thick. Once I have this rolled out, I'm going to use my hand to make a handprint. So I'm going to pick a good solid spot and I'm going to press down. I'm going to make sure you get all the way out to the fingers and then carefully lift your hand. Then you're going to take a knife um, and cut out around that. And then I'm going to use a straw or a skewer to place a hole in the bottom of the palm here. That's if I'm making a Santa Claus. If I'm making an elf, I'm going to place it in the top between the two fingers here. Another fun option that you can do is to take paw prints. Um, so if you're doing this with an animal, you want to make sure that they don't eat the dough. So my dogs were very enthusiastic, but I did want to make sure that they didn't eat any of the dough and you do want to wipe off their paw afterwards because there is the salt in it, so you don't want them licking too much of that off. So I have a couple of dog footprints and a cat footprint here that I'm going to do as well. With these ones, I'm not going to cut them out as closely, so I'm actually just going to kind of go around the outside. Same thing with this, I'm turning it into an ornament. I want to make sure that I have a hole in the top of it. And I'm going to place that on my baking sheet as well. Once those are done, I'm going to place them on my baking sheet and I'm going to put them in the oven at a very low temperature for two hours. So they're going in at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. Once my salt dough is completely dried and cooled, I'm going to paint it. So the first one I'm going to show you how to do is the Santa. So this is the one where my palm is facing down and I have the hole at the top. So I've mixed up a bit of paint to like a peach shade and I'm going to paint that right in the middle here. So right in the middle of the palm, I'm going to cover that whole area with that peach shade. And you can go down around the sides with this as well. You don't have to be very exact with your edges because you're going to cover all of that up. Once I have that done, I'm going to do his hat. So I'm going to rinse off my brush, get a bit of red paint, and I will paint the hat section of this. So his hat is going to be this whole top part, so basically the bottom of your palm and up through the thumb. And I'm going to cover all of that with the red paint. So there's where I am now. The last part of my painting, I'm going to paint his beard so all of the fingers are going to be white. Here's what my Santa looks like right now. Now we have to add the finishing touches. So I have some googly eyes, some cotton balls, and a red pom-pom for his nose. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my cotton ball and I'm going to pull it apart. So we're going to put a line of cotton along the bottom of his hat. So I have a piece like that that I might roll a little bit just to get it to stick together. And then with just a little bit of regular glue, I'm going to run a line between my peach color and my red hat. that and 
and stick that right on there. And of course he needs a pom-pom at the end of his hat, so I'm going to take the rest of that cotton ball and roll that into a ball. And then I'm going to glue that on the end of the thumb. So at this point it looks like that. I'm also going to add a little bit of a mustache, so in a very similar way, I'm going to pull a piece of cotton apart, use a little bit less this time, so I can get it a little bit thinner, and then I'm going to run that right at the top of his beard. So now between the peach and the white, I'm going to run a little bit of glue with a slight lift in the middle, and then stick that on there. His nose is gonna go right in the middle of the mustache. So I have his red nose here, taking the middle point, putting a dab of glue there, and then sticking that nose right in there. And then the last thing he needs are some eyes. So right in the middle of the peach section, I'm going to give him two eyes. And there's my Santa ornament. So now the last step is to just run a piece of string through that hole and hang it. You could also coat this. If you do wanna make it a little bit more safe and secure, you can spray this with a clear coat of um, spray paint, probably before you put any of your decorations on. So once you finish painting it, clear coat it, you can kind of shellac it, get it stronger that way, and then put your add-ons, so your cotton and your googly eyes and the pom-pom, and that'll just help it to hold up a little bit better. These are pretty fragile once they're done. So there's our Santa Claus. Our second option is going to go this way, and this one has the hole right here. So you can either put the hole here to hang it, or you can put it through that finger there at the top to hang it. This is going to be our elf. So with our elf, I'm going to use a whole lot more of that peach paint. So I'm gonna take that same color, and I'm going to coat the thumb and the pinky, and then almost all of the palm. So at this point, my elf looks like this. Then I'm going to paint those other three fingers in dark green. At this point, you're done painting the elf. So now again, we're going to take our cotton, pull a piece apart so that you've got a line, and that's gonna go right between your peach and green at the bottom of his hat. Now he's gonna have a pom-pom at the top of each of the three green fingers. So I'm going to take another cotton ball, pull that apart, roll those into slightly smaller round balls and stick those at the top of each of those fingers. So that's where he is at this step. Now we have to add a face in. So again, I'm going to take my googly eyes, a red pom-pom for his nose, And the very last part you can do either with paint or with a marker and you're just going to draw a little bit of a smiley face on underneath that nose. And there's my elf. Now you can again coat this one as well before you put the cotton on to make it a little bit stronger. Go ahead and write your name on the back, the date, put the string through that hole that you created earlier and you're all set to hang it from the tree. Our next technique is a simple marbling process. So you're going to want a clear bulb Either glass or plastic will work. If you're using the plastic ones, make sure that the seams seal very tightly. That's the one issue with using the plastic ones. So I have some glass bulbs. They have a slight iridescent sheen to them, which makes for a really cool effect. What I'm going to do is carefully remove the top and set that aside. And then I'm going to choose two highly contrasting colors. So you want to make sure that you have a good difference between these two colors. So I'm choosing white and blue for my first one. You can use three colors if you want. I'm going to make sure that your paints are really carefully mixed as well. And then starting with one color, I'm going to hold my glass bulb and I'm going to drip some paint into it. You don't need a ton of paint. You can always add more, but if you get too much in there, it does get kind of messy. 
then I'm going to add my next color in as well. And then I'm going to use my thumb to really carefully cover that and I'm going to slowly roll it around. This one takes a bit of patience, so depending on how much paint you're using, it does take a little while to get it to travel all the way around. I would recommend using the least amount of paint that you possibly can, because if you use too much paint, you might get a design that you really like, and then the second you hang it back up to dry, it's just going to drip down to the bottom. So if you use a little bit less paint, it's less likely to settle that way. Once you have it in a pattern that you want, you can simply set it back upright and set it to dry. I would recommend leaving it to dry open like that. It'll dry a whole lot faster. Um, and then you can put your stem back on. You can add glitter to these as well if you want a little bit more shimmer and you don't have the built-in iridescence. If you are getting too much of a solid color, you can take a skewer or a toothpick and stick that down inside and gently draw it through the paint to create a little bit more of a marbling effect on the bottom of that. So just squeeze those little pieces together. Depending on how fragile your ornament is, you want to be really careful with this section. And then pop that top back on, make sure that it's secure. So here you have a green and white one that I did and a blue and white. You can see kind of the different effect on that. For our last ornament design, I'm going to show you two simple paint techniques. You can do this on a blank flat ornament like this or on a, a small wood slice. If you have any of those, you can use that as well. So for the first one, I'm going to do a snowman. So I don't need too many colors of paint here. I'm going to take my dark blue and I'm going to do a bit of an outline right along the top for this. So with my dark blue, I'm going to paint all along the top. So it doesn't have to be completely perfect, but you want something that looks about like that. So you can see the upper part of that is all dark blue. And then I have kind of a bit of a half circle down at the bottom. Now that half circle, once my blue is dry, I'm going to fill in with white. While I'm waiting for those colors to dry, I'm going to do a second design. So this one is going to be a small penguin. So for the first part of this, I'm taking my black paint and I'm going to create an arc across to the bottom. Once I have a really simple arc, I'm going to make that a little bit thicker and I'm going to make it come down to a point in the middle. Then I'm going to end up with something that looks about like that and I'm going to let that dry. As soon as my blue and black arcs have dried, I'm going to fill in underneath the blue with white. And then I'm going to add some small snowflakes above that, just like that with just a quick dab of that white paint. On my black one, I'm going to fill in underneath. So this is going to be the penguin's face. And then I've done a little bit of a ruffle of white across the top. And that's going to be the base of the Santa hat. Once those parts are dry, I'm adding the next step. So I'll start with my snowman. There's only two small things that you still have to do with the snowman once you're at this point. One is his carrot nose. So this snowman is gonna be looking up at the sky. So I have my brush here and I'm going to take a bit of orange paint and right up at the top of that arc, I'm going to make a carrot shape. And there's his nose. Remember, you can always go bigger with this. So if the nose ends up looking too small once you're done, you can just make it bigger, but you can't make it smaller. So I'm going to let that dry. Depending on the type of paint you're using, you may need to do a second coat on that as well. The last step for our snowman is his smile. So with a small brush and a little bit of black paint, I'm just going to do some dots. And then there's my finished snowman. For our penguin, now that I've got the white dry on the bottom for his face and on the top for the hat, my first step, because I still have that orange brush, is going to be the beak. So I'm gonna again take that orange brush and take 
a little bit of orange paint and make an upside down triangle right under the tip of that peak of black that I did earlier. So it'll look just like that. Now with the black brush that I used for my snowman's smile, I'm going to take a little bit more black paint and do my penguin eyes right under the arc that comes to that tip on either side. So now my penguin has a face. Then my last step is to add his hat. So I'm going to take a little bit of red paint and above where I put the white here, I'm going to make his hat. Then his hat is going to look something like that. Depending on exactly where you put your penguin and his hat, you may be able to get a pom-pom at the end of that, just in your white paint. Because of how I put these on here, I'm actually going to take a tiny little piece of the cotton ball and glue it so that it actually sits right off the side of that. If you can see that. So here you have three different ways to create some ornaments for Christmas. We have our glass marbled paint ornaments, our flat painted ornaments, the penguins and the snowmen, and of course our salt dough, Santa, our elf. And then for the paw prints, I ended up coating those with a little bit of a metallic spray paint so that you can really see the paw print on there. Hope you enjoyed today's project. Merry Christmas to everyone. If you have any questions, let us know.